Hi everyone, it's Nick. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. Okay, in this video today, we are gonna to be talking about bathroom design mistakes and how to fix them. So this topic is really near and dear to my heart because I actually just renovated my bathrooms last year. Um, and so this video might be a little bit more ranty than usual, just because I may be projecting all the mistakes that I made in my bathroom renovation last year. So these are definitely mistakes that I have made or I have seen other people make. Uh, very frequently, very common mistakes that we just see over and over again. So I really wanna help you avoid those mistakes, whether you're redecorating your bathroom or you're doing a full renovation. Either way, I think you'll find value in these mistakes so that you can learn from them. Okay, first mistake, which is kind of an overarching mistake that I see over and over again, is just choosing the wrong contractor. Ideally, you wanna choose a contractor. Oh, by the way, mistake number one is just not having a contractor at all if you don't know what you're doing. Um, that happens all the time. But assuming you got a contractor, picking the wrong contractor is a mistake that is seen all the time. Ideally, it's someone that you've worked with before or someone that is a referral because so often there is just so much detailed work that is involved in a renovation for a bathroom. There's a lot of different tile work, you're dealing with humidity, you're dealing with lots of different things. And if you don't know what you're doing, or if you hire someone that doesn't know what they're doing, the project is not gonna go smoothly and you're probably not going to be happy with the result. Now, if you saw my renovation rant video that I did a while ago, you will know the golden rule that I have for renovation is no one cares about your money more than you do. So I don't want you to get ripped off, but the reality is, is that you care a lot more about your money than I care about your money. And the same goes that you might care about me because you might think I'm a nice guy and you don't want me to get ripped off. But at the end of the day, you don't care about my money as much as I do, right? That's the golden rule. The contractor might say that they always have your best interest, but the truth is there are some corners that can get cut and there are some things that they might do that you're not going to be really happy with. So working with someone that you trust that you've worked with before or is a great referral is a great way to start with your bathroom because so many things can go wrong that you really want to make sure that you get the right team on board that's able to execute on the design that you have outlined for your bathroom. Okay, now let's get into the other mistakes. So I would say next mistake that I see is just installing barn doors. I have a video on my channel, actually, it's like my most viewed video where I sort of make fun of farmhouse kitschy decor, barn doors included in that. Um, so it's well documented how much I hate barn doors, but I particularly hate barn doors on a bathroom. You come to the Nick Lewis channel because you wanna have an honest conversation and you wanna like, Let's get the real goods here, right? Let's talk about it. So with bathrooms, there are sounds and smells that a barn door is not gonna help you with. Okay, the barn door on a bathroom is just not a good idea. Okay, you guys, let's just um, not, let's try to keep things classy, but let's just say that there are other doors that are better suited for a bathroom. If you have some space challenges and you need to use some sort of sliding mechanism, a pocket door, if you can install one, is going to serve you a lot better than a barn door will, because a barn door is not gonna actually provide a seal to the bathroom. So we're gonna have those noise and smell issues that I talked about. So a pocket door is ideal um, or if you have the space and you're able to open the door inside the bathroom or outside that is a lot easier and better suited for the bathroom for the long term so no more barn doors on bathrooms please 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 Okay, next design mistake that I see over and over again is not taking into account the water and humidity that is happening in the bathroom. So some materials like um, wood that's not treated properly or some polished stones, for example, which I'll get to that in a second. Uh, wallpaper, sometimes a wallpaper. These are not really well suited for the bathroom because the bathroom is a humid environment. When you have your shower or your bathtub that's running, um, you wanna make sure that you have all the materials there that are built for that humidity. And that is something that you see people do all the time. You don't want a situation where you just throw some wallpaper on there and all of a sudden the humidity causes your wallpaper to come down. Make sure that it's appropriate for the bathroom. If it's gonna go on a wall or it's gonna go on a floor, make sure that it's appropriate for those different surfaces. You don't wanna be a situation where you have slipping issues or you have materials that are not gonna be able to stand up to the humidity of your bathroom. Now a powder room, by the way, is a little bit different. If you don't have a tub or a shower, uh, you might be able to get away with different materials like wallpaper, for example, um, uh, that you wouldn't be able to get through into a full bath. So just consider that as well. Okay, so next design mistake that I see is not considering uh, a floating toilet or a floating vanity. So not considering actually a floating toilet or a floating vanity, I think is a mistake because those can be a really great option for a lot of people because they're easier to clean. It's super easy to clean underneath. So oftentimes there's maybe some hygienic benefits there. Um, and it's just a really nice sort of clean contemporary design. And I know a lot of people just kind of go to Home Depot and they grab a toilet and they throw it in because they go, eh, a toilet's a toilet. I think that's a mistake 
mistake. There are floating toilets and really great modern toilets that I think you might want to consider as well that might fit your design style a little bit better. And by the way, I will also add, and this is purely personal, but I really don't care for the worm toilet. That is a design mistake, in my opinion, unless you love them, in which case, you know, you do you. But seeing all the different plumbing, I call it the worm. It sort of looks a little bit like a worm or a snake. I don't really like that on the side of the toilet. Um, just my personal preference, but I would rather something really sort of clean and modern and elegant. That's something that where you sort of hide a lot of that kind of internal plumbing that's going on in the toilet. I think it looks a little bit cleaner, a little bit more contemporary, but that's just my opinion. Okay, so next design mistake I see over and over again is unnecessarily moving some of your plumbing in your bathroom. So some things are easier to sort of change around and move around than others. And moving a toilet, you know, two feet over might seem like it's relatively simple, but it's actually usually a really costly endeavor. Uh, there's usually a lot more involved in moving a toilet or moving sort of plumbing around the bathroom. So if you can get away with it, if you're doing a renovation and you're thinking, how can you sort of reconfigure your bathroom, really take into account some easier, simpler ways, like maybe shrinking a vanity or moving something uh, like some decor around or whatever. It might be a lot simpler and easier than moving plumbing. I learned this the hard way when I had my commercial space back when I used to own a juice company and we found that uh, plumbing is very, very expensive and it's, you could be involved coring, it could be also a whole bunch of different things in order to move some basic plumbing. So it might seem really simple at the outset just to be like, oh, I'm just gonna move that toilet from there over there. It's probably a lot more expensive than you think and it might blow your budget. And oftentimes, unless it's really needed in order to really sort of change the flow of the bathroom, it's usually just a really expensive endeavor and you're probably not gonna get the payoff that you think you will. Okay, next interior design mistake that I see in the bathroom is carpet. Um, that's it, just carpet. Like putting carpet in the bathroom, what are you doing? Like it's, there's a hygiene thing, there's splashback, don't do carpet, okay? I've talked about the fuzzy things on top of the toilet seat. We're not doing that anymore. Uh, good rule of carpet. If you can pick up whatever it is and you can put it sort of in the washing machine or you can clean it easily, great. But if it requires equipment in order to clean, uh, don't put it in the bathroom. It's not made for the bathroom. Don't do it. That's it. Stop. Don't do it. Okay, next design mistake that I see is slippery tile in the shower. So if you have a shower pan, that's fine. That's your choice. You don't necessarily have to really worry about this because they're made for it. But if you are planning on tiling your shower, really make sure that the material that you're going to be using is appropriate for a shower. You don't want to slip in the shower. This is a hazard. This is dangerous. And I'm seeing a lot of these photos where people go, yes, I want this gorgeous polished marble, um, you know, whatever they plan on putting in. And it sometimes people are putting in things that are not appropriate for a shower. You do not want to hurt yourself in the shower. So check with the vendor, make sure that it is appropriate, not just for the bathroom, but really taking into account whether it's appropriate for the shower. Now, um, what I did, which I think works actually really well, is I just used a very small tile. I used penny rounds, but they have a lot of grout. And grout is actually really great in the shower because um, usually in contrast to the tile that's next to it, it creates a really sort of grippy surface, which is a lot safer uh, than some of these larger format tiles that have less grout. Okay, uh, next design mistake that I see is poor lighting. Again, so often we see the one light that's in the center of the room and people don't add any additional lighting. I love wall sconces in the bathroom. I think it's a really great way to sort of add some symmetry in the bathroom. If you have sort of a larger vanity, you can put two different wall sconces, a little bit more of a grander look, or you could just put one simple wall sconce above your mirror. But there's also other things that you should consider. Of course, you know I'm a big fan of recessed lighting strips. So feel free to put that in, you know, behind the mirror in your bathroom can really be elegant and beautiful underneath your vanity, especially if you did that floating vanity that I talked about. That's another really great way to sort of add a little bit of a subtle glow from underneath your vanity. Also really super classy, which I love. Um, if you're really grand and you have the space for it, then you can also get away with a pendant or even a chandelier over top of the bathtub. Bit grand for me, not really my style, but it might be your style and that's totally fine. So that's another way that you can add um, sort of a really interesting, uh, I guess, lighting fixture over and above a bathtub. Just be really careful when you get out of the tub, you don't hit your head on a stupid chandelier because that's a bit ridiculous, but it's another option at least that's out there for you. But definitely recessed lighting, wall sconces, add a little bit of light, you know, some task lighting as well, especially, you know, the bathroom, you're gonna have to accomplish some tasks. You're gonna maybe do your makeup in there. You're gonna do your hair in there, whatever you're gonna do. You wanna make sure that you have proper lighting to be able to accomplish what you need to do in the bathroom. Okay, next bathroom design mistake that I see is not keeping a bathtub. So this one kind of hurts my soul a little bit because I don't have kids, because you all know I don't care for children, and I also don't really like baths. I'm not, I don't, I'm just not a big bath person. I don't like sitting in there with the candles and the 
glass of rosé or whatever in your book. I'm not that person, okay? That's not me, I don't like baths. Neither does Mike, so we actually have a bathtub but we don't use it. So why is it a mistake? Well, it's a mistake because of resale. So you're probably gonna end up selling your place. I know it doesn't feel like it right now, but eventually you're not gonna own it anymore. You're going to be selling it to somebody else and you're really limiting the amount of people that are gonna be able to buy your apartment or your house if you don't have any bathtub in your space. And I know that kills me because if you have one bathroom and you never take baths, it feels ridiculous to have a bathtub. But the main reason is that people have kids and when people have kids, they're gonna want to bathe their kids in the bathtub. That's just the reality. And so you're really limiting your pool of buyers if you don't have any bathtub at all in your apartment or your home. So I do think it's a mistake to just completely remove all the bathtubs and not have any bathtubs in the space. That doesn't mean that every room needs a bathtub. I have two bathrooms. They used to have two baths. I took one out to replace it with a really large shower, which I love, and that's in our uh, primary bathroom, which is great. But I did include a bathtub that is in the guest that is just there. Uh, basically, it doesn't get used that often, but I just know it's going to be really important when eventually we do decide to sell this apartment. Okay, next bathroom design mistake is themed rooms. Okay, so uh, themed rooms. What? So I'm not talking about a design style or like a cohesive color palette. Oh, that is great. That is awesome. If it's like well integrated into the rest of your home and it's beautiful, you know, I'm all about that. If you've got a color scheme and uh, you know, you're, you're doing all the right things in the bathroom to make it look really cohesive and beautiful, obviously that is awesome. But if it feels like it's a theme, like you're walking, I'm specifically talking about the beach theme that I just feel like so many people have in their bathroom. Um, it shouldn't really feel like you're walking into a completely separate space in your home because you've arrived at some sort of weird sort of theme place. When you just take a little bit over the top, you're sort of moving beyond design style. You're moving beyond the art of subtlety and you're starting to move into like a kitschy theme. And I don't think that's what um, you're trying to do, but that's how it reads, I think. And that's a bit of a mistake. Again, if you love it, who am I? I'm just a guy on the internet. Don't listen to me. If you love it, then keep doing it. But I think it's a mistake. Um, um, because I just think it looks a little bit kitschy. I think there are some more subtle ways that you can incorporate your personality into a bathroom without putting a giant anchor over top of the toilet. Just me. Okay, next design mistake that I see in the bathroom is sort of keeping a gross vinyl shower curtain for way longer than you should. If you have a brown line on your shower curtain, it's time to get a new one. If you're going for a plastic shower curtain, that's obviously a waterproof material, but there are more natural looking uh, shower curtains that make a little bit more sense or just a little bit more um, chic than going for some plastic curtain with maybe like a giant toucan or a jungle theme or something on it. Now, if you have children, that's a little bit different. I give you a bit of a pass there, but um, I would say going for something that's a little bit more natural, maybe a little bit more organic while still being waterproof makes a ton of sense. Also, if you're doing a full renovation and you want to skip the shower curtain completely, great choice. Uh, there are sliding door options, glass door options that I think work really, really well in the shower to be able to sort of section it off. And it's really beautiful and gorgeous. And you don't have to go with the big sort of crinkly plastic shower curtain that, um, I'm really sick of and I think people should uh, get rid of. <laughs> Okay, next bathroom design mistake that I see is not taking into account door clearances. So I've mentioned this in my other design mistakes video, but I really wanna talk about those doors because the bathroom is usually a really small room and therefore the door clearances become really important. So ideally, especially you know if you have the option and this can sometimes be like you're stuck between a rock and a hard place here uh, in terms of what to do with that door, you know, consider sort of rejigging the door or rejigging the room a little bit in order to be able to create something that is more functional for that door. I know I had this in my primary bathroom. It's just the way the building is. It's just the way the bathroom was made where, you know, you open the door and you kind of got to step in the bathroom and do a little shimmy in order to move the door back. It's not ideal, but that's what I'm kind of stuck with. If you have the option with a full renovation, something like a pocket door would be a really great way to eliminate sort of those clearance issues with the door while also not doing a barn. Okay, next design mistake that I see in the bathroom is unclear tile direction, I'm gonna call it. So um, there are some really intricate little details, especially around things like edging and spacing and sort of where you put the tile on a wall. Like is it, you know, especially around that niche that you might put in your shower. You gotta be really, really careful to make sure that you're providing the adequate direction that your tile person needs to install the tile the way that you want it installed. So make sure that that niche is centered. Make sure the tile is lined up the way that you want it. Really providing that clear direction 
direction for how you want the tile laid because so often these little edgy details, these little things where the niche is all wonky or the tile is off center is always gonna make your bathroom just always look a little bit off. And this is something you wanna be really careful with because these are these fixed elements that are very difficult to change later. So really being super clear with your direction to your general contractor or the tile person, depending on sort of how you're dealing with it. Because if you don't have a designer, then congratulations, you are the designer. Your job is to make sure that the tile is put down the way that you want it to put down so that you're going to be happy. Your contractor and your tile person are not your designer. You're going to have to be able to do that. So really make sure that you're clear with the direction on how you want the tile laid. Okay, next bathroom design mistake that I see is not enough storage. So there's so much going on in the bathroom, right? You've got all these different toiletries. You've got overstock of all your toiletries that you've sort of kept for later. You know, we've got a lot of different things that are going on in the bathroom and it's a small room. So you wanna make sure that you have adequate storage over the long term. One of the things that I love that a lot of people don't really take into account is a medicine cabinet. You know, an old school, straight up medicine cabinet. They're really underrated, especially if you can get one of those ones that is kind of inserted into your wall, into a niche. That's a really great thing because you're kind of hiding your storage behind the mirror. But even if you don't have a medicine cabinet, making sure that you have adequate storage inside your vanity. So, you know, we all love those little pedestal sinks. They can be really cool. Not really great for storage. Not a lot of room there. There's nothing you can store in that area. So it's a bit of a wasted space. So it can be beautiful. It can still work. Just make sure that you have storage in other areas of the bathroom. If you walk in and there's a pedestal sink, no medicine cabinet and no storage anywhere, it's like, where's your towels? Where's all your stuff going? Because what you don't want is a cluttered mess on your sink where you just got a bunch of stuff thrown on your vanity because you don't have adequate storage to store all that stuff. So as so long as you have some adequate storage, you're gonna be fine, but it's a mistake to not have enough. Okay, my next bathroom design mistake is not taking into account grout color. So a lot of people overlook grout because they just seem to think that it's like, oh, we'll just throw whatever grout's there, like just kind of let your tile guy figure it out. And that is a mistake because grout is really important. And there's actually a lot more grout when you look at these pattern tiles than you sort of realize. It's actually a huge deal to look at what grout is going to be selected versus the tile that you place in your bathroom. Especially important in the bathroom where you probably have a lot of tile going on in the first place. So here's a quick tip on how to choose grout. If you want to choose a grout that is going to be really subtle and sort of blend in, then choose a colored grout that is going to match closely with the tile that you have chosen. That is really going to make it really seamless. Now, if you want the grout to really stand out and you want to create that contrast and you want that really big pop with that uh, tile and you really want to make it stand out, then choose something that is opposite or that is quite different than the color of the tile that you have selected. So right here, I'm showing you an image of a basic subway tile. Right now, it's the same subway tile, but look how different it looks with matching white grout versus if you're going to use a really dark grout. Notice that the prominent tile stands out so much more in the pattern and the shape of the tile just really jumps out when you have that contrast. And that's how the eye naturally works. When we see contrast, we're attracted to it. We're really able to distinguish the difference between the tile and the grout, and it's going to make it look really prominent. So if you want something a little bit more subtle, choose the same color. If you want to choose something that really pops and stands out, choose a contrasting color. Okay, that is it for my bathroom design mistakes. I'm going to link here to two videos. First is the playlist actually for the design mistake series that I've done. I've done kitchen and living room and I'll do more in the future. I'm also going to link here to my renovation video because I think there's a lot of value if you're planning to do a bathroom renovation. I will see you all in the next video. Thanks. Bye.